Hey everyone, I want to thank you guys for subscribing, for liking my video, and for commenting. Today, I wanted to talk about how to, I guess, be strong. Um, as you know, the name of my channel is Mark Carroll the Strong, and it started off a bit as a joke. But it was also a way for me to reclaim or transmute the annoying feeling I got every time someone called me strong because pff, it's annoying. Um, I don't think people really understand the burden and the overwhelming feeling that you can have in being strong and being seen as a strong one. But I just want to share five things that got me through, five things that I try to practice um, even if it's not an overwhelming time, just to keep me grounded and centered. And um, there are things that came through experience, um, advice of others, and just, I guess, tidbits I picked up along the way. The first one is to always acknowledge how you feel in the overwhelming moment. Without acknowledgement, there will be no way to figure out where to go from here. Without, um sitting down and going this is what's going on in this exact minute you can't move on you can't take the next step you can't figure out what you're gonna do and um don't ever let anyone make you feel like your feeling is invalid your thoughts are invalid or that something is wrong with you don't stuff your feelings down don't ignore them um because the minute you let them in and you process each thought that comes with it, you'll learn to overcome or manage what it is you're going through. My process in intense moments continuously evolves. Um, 28 years ago when I dealt with my dad's death, I, sorry, I learned to push things away because I was 11 years old and I didn't want to be in anyone's way. My mom had been with my dad when she was 17. She was in her 40s and he was no longer with us and she fell apart. And for a woman that I basically idolized, watching her fall apart was one of the scariest things in my life. So I thought if I minimized myself, it would make it less overwhelming for her. That's a whole other story we'll get in in another video. But yeah, I learned that that was not the way to deal with it. And in 2003, when I buried my firstborn daughter, I learned not to ignore those feelings or let anyone tell me that I was wrong in feeling the way I felt. Um, music is a great thing to get you through. It, um, it can actually bring you down to that lowest low and then lift you right back up where you need to be. It's just one of those magical things that I keep in my arsenal. Um, the radio was always almost on when I was growing up and with the siblings of mine being way older than me, I was exposed to a wide array of music, types of music and just, you know, music is one thing that always kept me on beat. Um, the second thing is to write. Um, journaling has always been something I've done, whether consistently or sporadically, it's always been present. Um, but for overwhelming times such as grief or just disappointment or moments where you just feel it's hard to cope, journaling can actually be something that helps and you can do it in a twofold manner you can actually do it where you have your positive thoughts and you have your negative thoughts and for negative thoughts you can actually burn those um those thoughts that you have that you would be terrified to say out loud terrified to let anyone know that you're even thinking those um you can write those down and burn them especially if you don't want to keep them or have a reminder of them um you can find a moment to yourself speak out what you're feeling and announce that you're letting this go and that you need help coping with it and use a fireproof container 
light it up and just release as the ashes form as the smoke comes up you can just let yourself feel like this is where I am letting this go and I'm not letting it control or define me um, you feel a breakaway sometimes in that moment or you feel a shift in your healing you actually feel like whoa something's going on I know for me um, it helped immensely when my dad's death anniversary had come around again and I was thinking about about how young I was when he died and what all I missed out on and how my life went not having a father and I started to get angry I felt I don't know left out my siblings had him for 20 plus years each and here I was at 11 just no daddy and the the two or three years leading up to that he was sick so but I wrote him a letter letting him know how much I loved him but I was angry and I just was super ticked and just getting down to just how life was without him and I burned it I let it go and I was like I cannot carry this anymore I also wrote one to my brother I have a brother who passed in 2011 and he it was the weirdest time for me because as close as we were and as much as like I used to say we were there were things that came out about him that had me like wow and there were some situations that I learned about that just weren't the best and I wrote him a letter because I had actually wrote him a letter before he died and he died before he got it and I rewrote this letter expressing how I felt and just telling him that I'm just gonna let it go because it makes no sense to carry it each time I felt a release of tension in my body I felt as if my soul was much much lighter it was just an amazing feeling in that moment because I'd be re-grieving um not just re-grieving the person's absence in my life but like going over just things leading up to their death and things that I felt would have gone differently in my life is always in the back of my mind and it doesn't it didn't give me a good feeling it wasn't the best state of mind to be in and it just was so many things that I was already carrying I didn't need this on top of everything else and I I, I let that go and um yeah so you can use music you can acknowledge your feelings use music and journal that's three things even though I said five the music is a bonus getting outside is another way to deal with um being overwhelmed stressed grieving um I learned that the beach unintentionally have become a spot for me to deal with my hard moments especially when we moved here to Hilothar um we moved here giving up everything in Nassau it was a move <laughs> it was a completely faith-based move and one of the scariest things I have done and like we were here and there are no words to describe it because we knew nobody here. We'd only been here once before to check out the school that I put my son in. And then I announced, hey, let's go. And I don't know, I gave up. I was working for myself. I gave that up. My boyfriend was working and what he did was he announced, like, we had been here a week. My son had started school. And he announced that he was going to go back to Nassau, where we're from, and keep his job and pay the bills over here that way because it doesn't make sense for both of us to be unemployed. So that was the first blow. The second blow was when he came back after the job had actually called him, we had been to an employment fair at a local hotel. They hadn't called 
and I like didn't have my heart set on it but he had gotten he'd finally gotten called to work and he was finally back here and he was working and you know we would take little trips up and down the island we'd hit the beaches we would do all these things to just get to know the area better and keep the children occupied and keep their minds off of like the transition we were going through sometimes and I realized there was this beach we were told about in this little hidden spot and it's a 30 minute walk from where we parked the car and we explored it a bit and then we found a fishing spot but when everyone was fishing I decided to go off by myself and I sat in the water and I cried and I just I cried I released everything that I've been holding in about the move it was just a heavy time for me I wanted to be working I had no intentions of being here not working um, in Nassau there's always some hustle to be on and there was to me nothing here no way to hustle um, and I just felt like what did I do and I sat in the salt water and I cried and I spoke aloud and I just was like oh my goodness what have I done you know we came out here and like what have I done and I hadn't heard back from the hotel I had sent out what felt like a gazillion resumes before we left Nassau we hadn't gotten called back from anyone and it was just like wow and as I cried and I spoke aloud I imagined everything just drifting out to sea and by the time everyone came walking back from the fishing spot and we headed back to the car I was in a different mental space I had felt a shift and just felt like we were gonna be okay so getting outside beach preferably does wonders but even if you can't get near the beach just walking in the grass barefoot does it for me as well okay number four is creating I'm a creative and it erupts for me defying all description I'm happiest when I'm taking a pile of materials and just transforming into them transforming them into something you wouldn't imagine or expect or just taking stuff and making it more useful in a different way or making it pretty I just love the whole process most of the time more than I love the finished product when my mom died I was in a tailspin um, my ex-husband handles grief and life differently than I do and I'm trying to grieve transition raise two kids be a wife be a, everything that's required and more and she my sister and I had started a business and it hadn't really taken off or level out or done any of that good stuff and he goes you need to get a job now I'd been home since I had my daughter who was two at the time I think she just was going on to that year and I wasn't totally ready to have her anywhere um and it just it was a lot it was asking a lot of me and I took out my mom's sewing machine and set it up and discovered that I could sew <laughs> which is really funny because the whole time that she was alive I sewed maybe two outfits for a goddaughter of mine for her birthday and never sewed again I was pregnant with my son at the time and I was like yeah not doing that again anytime soon I understood the concept there are some things I just for some reason it just wasn't sticking with me and it was annoying I was frustrated maybe it was the pregnancy hormones but all I know is I didn't sew again and I ended up taking this machine out now when she died and with some help from my godmother who lived next who lived next door I managed to get some things put together and she was like interesting that you're sewing like this and sewing now after your mom is gone she's like it must she must have handed it off to you somehow I understood things that I didn't understand before and I just instantly knew how to do certain things and I mean I guess you can say it's in the blood because my mom's dad sewed and my mom's mom sewed um so I'd always been around a machine I'd always sit and watch them so I just never 
picked up and did anything myself. So that got me in a headspace to deal with any conversation that started with, did you look for anything? Are you open to anything? He lacked tact and it would grate me the wrong way. And it's like, I must under, it was like a situation where I was to understand where he was coming from. But where I was coming from was a non-factor. Um, what I was dealing with were non-factors. It didn't matter. You need to go work. And it just was like, let me just sew and get myself to a point where I can stay calm and not be snappy at the children because me and their father aren't getting along. So anything that you can do to create, like buy a coloring book. It doesn't have to be you buy a blank sketchbook and have to fill it with these intricate, detailed, complicated things. You can buy a coloring book and some markers or pencil crayons and have at it. Um, painting's good. Drawing's good. Anything you can do to channel what you feel through your fingers, aside from writing, they're always good. And it always diffuses stuff within you and it breaks up that tension. Also, um, I've learned that um, at the end of it all, when all of these things in your arsenal are, they seem not to be working or they're not just doing what you need, talk therapy never fails. And between my friends and counseling, I've made it through some pretty crappy stuff. Um, when you're at the point where certain things can't be said to friends or you feel like they don't understand, because there's always a point where we don't understand each other. There's always a point where it's going to be something we don't identify with or we try our best to empathize and it just isn't there. Sometimes you need someone who doesn't know you. Um, you know, that talk therapy, that counseling, that that hits the spot in ways that you need. And that's what I did in 2003 when I was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder. I decided that I couldn't handle my body physically reacting to grief the way it was when my daughter died. I had gone to the hospital several times thinking I was having a heart attack and they could find nothing wrong, blood pressure, normal, everything. I had an ECG or EKG. I had a heart test run, normal, like just everything normal, normal, and no one could tell me what was wrong until I went to another doctor, and somehow we got onto the topic of my firstborn having died, and he goes, oh, he's like, how are you, are you, like, whether are you having any other symptoms that would make you think that? I don't remember the way he worded it, but I did end up telling him that I would hear my daughter's oxygen machine when I'm out or when I'm at home. I would just hear beeping. And the heart machine. And then there were times when I would hear the beeping of her oxygen machine that would tell you that her saturation levels were low and it would give off a warning. I would hear it. Like, clear as day. Just sitting down. I could be watching TV. I could be talking to someone. And I would hear this beeping and... He was like, you have post-traumatic post stress disorder. And it was like, <sighs> like what? Like, you think that's something for people who've been in like these horrific, dangerous situations, like guys who've come from war, or someone who's been in a car accident. And he's like, that's trauma. That's traumatic what you went through. So I ended up going to counseling and it helped immensely. The other time when I ended up having to call and make an appointment to just clear myself was in 2009 when my grandmother died April and in August and in September my mom died we were just processing my grandmother being gone and September it was like <sighs> WTF so I spent the first couple of months trying to tell my elbow from my knee I would go in the food store and could not figure out what I went in the food store for I, I just, I couldn't function. I was handling the kids fine, but it was just weird. Like, that was the main thing I remember, just going into the food store and not 
understanding or knowing what it was I came in to get. And I decided after weeks of this, after months of this, the feeling wouldn't go away. I felt like I wasn't processing properly. I called and started counseling where I was able to to release some things and just talk about it and just like make sense of it and it just turned out to be another traumatic traumatic event because she'd walked out the house saying she was coming right back and she never did and it was just that suddenness that was I guess the blow that made everything just more complicated so yeah you know after you've created you've acknowledged your feelings you've listened to music you've gotten outside you've journaled you've done all these things and it just feels like nothing's working good old talk therapy um with a counselor or a therapist will probably be the cherry on top that gets you where you need to be in whatever stage of dealing with that with whatever you're dealing with there's no wrong wrong or right right way excuse me there's no wrong way there's no right way there's no too long or too short we all process differently and these five things or or six things are what have helped me along and gotten me through and one of the reasons why i can now embrace the name markara the strong even though it still makes me wince a little bit it still makes me feel like you know, I don't know. I just, sometimes when you're in the middle of something, the last thing you want to hear is, girl, you strong. You know, it's like, I don't feel that way right now. You know, I'm laying flat on my back, looking up at the ceiling and wishing for the ground to swallow me up or wishing that I could just get up my skin and avoid whatever I'm feeling. And people just go, no man, you strong. You've already blah, blah, blah. And it's like, y'all don't you don't get it eh? you know like I'm sorry goodness this but yeah it's just it, it's yeah I just hope those tips are helpful and I'm hoping that in the comment section you guys will share what gets you through um or how you use any of the things that I've used and you know to go from surviving to thriving you know you end up treading water sometimes and you don't realize how long you've been treading water and you know we all need to get beyond that sometimes in order to get to the next step of where we need to be so like i said drop a comment let me know um and yeah thanks for subscribing thanks for watching and listening and See you in the next one.